Welcome back to the Wrong Advice Podcast. I'm your host, John Picciuto, and I'm very excited to have my good buddy in studio, Stephen Servin. My man, how you doing? Very well. How are you, John? I'm doing great, buddy. Great to have you in studio today. I appreciate you having me. Oh, thanks for coming, man. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the listeners? Uh, my name is Stephen Servin. I'm 33 years old. I reside out of West Caldwell, New Jersey. Um, uh, I consider myself a creative of some sort. I have a full-time job. Say that. With the town of North Caldwell. That's like the... Uh, nine to five, but um, I'm always interested in doing other things besides that, um, usually in creative fields. I've been a professional photographer for about 10 years. Uh, shied away from photography. I still shoot here and there, um, but I've, for the last year and two months, I've been running a woodworking business from COVID that started uh, when I was laid off from work and it sort of snowballed and just because of social media and I guess getting new uh, clients, it's it's really turned into something special. So obviously the Instagram and such will be linked in the bio. Okay. The woodworking stuff visually is not great for a podcast medium, but your stuff is incredible. I wish I had more than 430 square feet to put something <laughs> that, you, that you have <laughs> in this space. For you, of course. But um, talk to me about the last year. So I, I mean, was it a hobby that you kind of just always were interested in and like yeah. how did you start yeah the- yeah exactly that um it's funny uh so i have a buddy of mine he was a carpenter and he has his own chainsaw mill and what that is is a it's a jig as you like to call it jigs are in a woodworking term for just something you connect to a tool to create like something out of wood um it's like an accessory uh so he has something where he connects to his chainsaw and can mill logs you know into slabs and slabs are vertical uh, or horizontal, I guess, uh, slabs of wood that keep about two to three inches thick, mm-hmm. you know, that keep the natural edge of the lumber. You know, that's why I do a lot of live edge stuff. That's it's, right. it's called live edge. Which um, for people listening, it's like the bark end of the... Right, yeah, right. it's a natural edge. We don't square it off. You keep the natural edge, and it's, it's pretty popular right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had a bunch of slabs um, dried because it takes like that, and I'll get into that very soon about dryness of wood and how I found out about that the hard way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, he had a couple pieces of wood, and I was on quarantine, not quarantine, uh, uh, relieved from work for a couple of weeks, and I was like, hey, what can I do? And I, I saw a couple pieces online. I'm like, I could really do this. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So I knew he had some wood, and uh, just turned it into a console table. In which I raffled off because I have a friend that raffles uh, quads. And oh, makes, makes a whole lot of money doing this. Wow! Yeah, he raffles off quads. It's a six-figure side hustle. I entered this raffle. I yes, I think yes. I won sixty bucks. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, yeah. That's our, our mutual friend, how we met, Jackie Malesio, was right. very mad that she I was won. very mad. Yeah. I, know. I, I, remember, I was like, I don't want the sixty bucks. I, I want the, the fucking table. I remember the comment <laughs> vividly. She was, yeah, she wasn't very happy. Uh, so. Yeah, I raffled. I was like, all right, well, this is going to be a good way to get my name out. Mm-hmm. And just even through that, people, a lot of people were like, all right, if I don't win this raffle, can I? Can you make me a, a coffee table? Can you make me a desk? And so on and so forth. And uh, sort of snowballed from there, uh, did the raffle, and then started looking around Facebook and just the internet, talking to a lot of different people, and just learning about, like, all right, how, how can I really make this happen? Mm-hmm. Learning about different types of wood, uh, moisture content, how, like, you can't just cut wood down fresh and make a table because it has to be really dry like for years outside and then you throw it in something called a kiln it's mm-hmm. a big you know like a, almost like a there's vacuum kilns like it cooks it to a certain percentage how so does something it, dry outside if it rains uh you just you, you it's called like stickering yeah you, you pretty much you, how you how you cut it you just slab it and then you put like pieces of wood in between them so for air can get in between and you you stack it the way it's actually like naturally round mm-hmm. you know so you start with the lower piece this and that and then some people obviously put like a shed over it or some sort sure. of, gotcha you know um covering but they need it air dry for a couple of years how thick each piece has to be one year outside dry so, so it's two and in- two wow. inches thick two two years outside and then a kiln it's a whole process and i had no clue wow so i was getting wood from people like um i know somebody who has a tree business so i'm getting this wood i'm like yeah i'll just get this wood for free i'll be rich <laughs> <laughs> you know it doesn't have to be this hard yeah but, oh it, it was really hard <laughs> <laughs> so, um, started it that way. Uh, yeah, just learned as much as I could. I mean, I, I'm pretty good with tools. Like I've, I've done wood shop and, you know, I'm decent at a lot of different stuff like that. But to this extent, like to, with this, there's you know, learning epoxy, learning, you know, all different ways to flatten slabs, 
So it was a whole new experience for me, and I was taking on jobs that I've never done before. I'm taking these deposits. Like, yeah, I'll figure it out. And I've just been figuring it out ever since. That's fucking awesome. And it's, it's been working out really well. It seems um, like a natural extension. Like you said, you're a, a photographer for 10 right, years. Yeah, it seems yeah. like a natural, creative I flex. I need that, exactly. Yeah. Cause especially, I was working a lot, and a 9 to 5 is just not enough for me. I've always like, oh, like, I need more. I need something else. I can't sit home after work, watch some TV. Sure. I know I work out. And that's something else to do, but... Um, even photography, that's how I found it that way. Cause I needed something else. I needed an, uh, some sort of creative outlet. Uh, and yeah, that for that, f- for, for me, this is, it, it's really been fulfilling that. And, you know, having that it's, it's been awesome. I love it. You know, cause do you feel like it flexes like a different sort of creative muscle in your head or like in your soul or something Compared like to photography? Or yeah. Just in general. Just in general. Like, uh, yeah, of course. Because my, what I really get out of it, especially like what I loved doing in photography, because what I did mostly in photography was action sports. Mm-hmm. It's like skateboarding. So like a skater would come up to me or a company like Vans. Like I shot a lot of stuff for Vans. Oh, no shit. Vans, and I worked for Thrasher Magazine. The biggest, Fuck, that's yeah, sick. I've had a lot of stuff published in them. I worked for them for a while. Wow, that's awesome. So it's like, all right, like I, there's skate spots, like a stair set or some ledge, you know, let's call it a skate spot, quote mm-hmm. unquote. So a skater like, yeah, I want to do this at this spot. So me, I'm really good at, um, like I still have a crazy imagination so i could picture in my head like all right how am i gonna shoot this how am i gonna like so putting what i have in my head and actually making it happen like the, the photo of like all right well this this how this trick's gonna look you know um still as a still image uh and like like all right well you know i know how this how the composition is gonna be and I've, i'm always trying to do a little wide angle stuff uh, mm-hmm. like in skateboarding they do a lot of fisheye they're really close but i, I want to make a photo i want to make something cool and visually yeah um appealing so, and the same thing with like with this woodworking, because a lot of it's commissioned, so it's custom stuff, and that's what I like doing the best, because they're like, they have, they have an idea, they have a vision. I'm like, give me some inspiration, and really making it happen, and seeing like the look on the customer's face, and like going from maybe a sketch on on some paper to actually making it happen in something that's tangible. That's that that's it for me. That's, that's awesome. So fulfilling, and you know that the gratification I get from that. Yeah. So, so that, I came. Sort of correlates. Yeah, that's awesome. I came out of your shop. I don't know, maybe like two, three weeks ago, and you're mm-hmm. working on like a huge table. So what's what's like the biggest piece that you've made today? Uh, these dining room tables. But Big yeah. black walnut dining table. It's a single slab. Um, it was probably 400 pounds. Just a piece of wood Shit. alone, three inches thick. Probably seven feet long, but but it's like really wide too. It's for a woman in Roseland. You know that thing was a beast. Um, actually two dining room tables in Roseland, a bar top. They've been pretty big. So yeah. it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, from a photography perspective, obviously I'm, I'm a photographer as well. And you mentioned like being able to like creatively like present your vision for a particular photograph or mm-hmm. a piece of wood or, or, or a, you know, something that you're making for someone. I often struggle with like what my vision of something's going to be before I'm there. Right. Yeah. So like whether I'm shooting with a model or I'm doing street work or whatever, until I'm presented in the moment, it's hard for me to. Oh, of course. Well, yeah. Cause obviously, you know, that's, that's what you, especially yeah, you're doing portrait photography or even you do landscape, you're out doing street stuff. Obviously that's not on the fly. That's, mm-hmm. that's what's catching your eye. You know, lining up compositions, oh shit, how the how this light's working, and all that kind of stuff has to factor into it. But yeah, with the model, I mean, like, just, do you find yourself like, like I can't pre-plan my creativity? Yeah, to an extent. I mean, with that, maybe your location, like how you're going to same locations, because you have awesome, like as like a portrait photographer or someone doing shooting people, um, like you're gonna constantly maybe go back to the same locations, or you're gonna find a location like all right, I want. So you'll have that in your head, like all right, well. I know how the light's going to look here. If it's a dark, it's in an alleyway, like depending where you are. And then obviously you can come up with, you know, ideas for that. So talk me through how you started working for like Thrasher and Vans. I mean, like that's, those are huge yeah, brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just to the skate community. The skateboard community is very tight knit. You mm-hmm. know, we, everyone knows everybody. Um, and there wasn't a lot of skate photographers, especially coming from the East Coast and Jersey. There's some out of New York City. When they all moved to LA, like a lot of them, the filmers the photographers even the, the skateboarders weather helps yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah of course but that's where mostly the industry as well but with new york it's like new york city skaters even there's a lot of people coming from la in fact new york because it's the fucking coolest because well, la Cause, sucks yeah exactly it's, <laughs> it's the culture over here it's the street vibe it's, it's real raw over here it's not commercial bullshit mm-hmm. um so people love coming back here i love shooting out like in our sort of urban areas like i've shot a lot of an awesome photo that was actually across the street from here no shit there's a, yeah there's a parking garage um what is that? Maybe Midland. There's a parking garage, and it's got these stairs with a huge handrail coming from Bloomfield Avenue to the parking garage. Okay. So I shot a kid ollieing over that. I, I could show you. It's and was that in Thrasher? That was no. That was in another magazine. Okay. But yeah, um, I've shot a bunch of photos in Montclair. Uh, 
But yeah, how I got into that, it's just knowing people, networking, it's it's crazy. Like I grew up skateboarding since fourth grade. I still love it. That's who I am. It's it's comes from you know skating is such a creative outlet as itself. You know, it's not a sport. Mm -hmm. Like oh, it's, it's a, you don't know, call it a sport. Yes, it was can, in the Olympics. You can judge it. Yes, there's a way to judge it. <laughs> but it's it's you can't be the best at it. You can't win skateboarding. It's not a game. Yeah, it's an ever flowing thing. That's a creative. Like, I agree everyone's with got that. their own style. Everyone has their own tricks. What they like to do. Mm -hmm. You know how they pr approach a certain scenario or stair set or whatever the obstacle may be. It's art. It is. It is. It's literally a, like poetry in motion. Like you're creating it as you go. Everyone, it's, so that's why you really can't take that away from people. Like, oh, like everyone could throw a football the same way as Aaron Rodgers, but not everyone skates the same. Not everyone, you know, has their, uh, everyone has their own style. Mm -hmm. So, uh, getting, getting so back. So just shooting for. Yeah, just shooting for for people, you know, for local skate shops. That's where you really start at. You know, okay. skating local kids. A lot of kids. Are and is this still like a thing? Like, can oh. you still be like a big skate photographer oh, yeah, in 2021? Yeah. You, you yeah. travel around the world with these, these, these teams. Like, it could be the Vans team. It could be a board company that you'll travel around the world. And they'll be like, all right, it'll be on the internet, like on the, the websites. Um, it'll be installed in the magazines. There's still skate magazines, probably, you know, like that's awesome. Um, so you'll travel around the world. It could be a tour in the United States. It could be to Egypt or, you know, Japan, and you'll pretty much cover the trip and hmm. you'll shoot all the photos for it. You'll, you, a lot of times you'll you do the written word too, you know, you'll cover. So you'll do the whole, maybe a, a five page spread in these magazines. That's sweet. Their, their whole trip and how shit goes. So did you get to travel anywhere when you were? Uh, just the United States. Okay. No, I never made that big. Yeah. You know, like I could have, it's just like, it's how timing was in life. Yeah. It's hard to, you need like a job to pay yeah, bills. Exactly. And... Like I didn't go to LA. I didn't do all that. So I was doing this on the side. So yeah. I was just, it's, we're, we're about the same age. And I, I found that like, so you have a gigantic head start on me, like creative wise, photography wise. Like I just kind of stumbled into this mm -hmm. love of my life. How long life. have you been doing this? I've, I've wondered. I've been taking pictures, I want to say for somewhere between three and five years. Okay. And I can't quite remember, like my buddy, Alex Sweetwood owns Unique Photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I bought a... Yeah, I knew his uncle. I, I bought a, uh, Jesus Christ, what was it? Like a 60D. Oh, the, the Canon in 2004 yeah, 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 yeah. or five. And that wasn't a bad camera. No, no it was I, fine. I bought a shit Canon. I started as well. Listen, I started shooting because my buddy had a ramp in his backyard, and he, a guy across the street had this like uh, Canon T3i, and he was trying to still shoot photos of us, and he, he couldn't figure it out because it's a hard to shoot skateboarding. Like the action, you need to be like, especially Heights, lighting, you know, yeah. understand how that is. So I was like, all right, let me screw around with this, and I started figuring it out. And I was like, I looked on YouTube and like, like a couple of skate photographers, just simple stuff, and I got some sweet photos. I'm like, wow, I could fucking do this. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was out of, it was out of no like it was out of nowhere. That's so awesome. So I got it for I want to say I bought it for like my 25th birthday because mm -hmm. I distinctly remember, like, it. I brought it to Atlantic City for my birthday, and I it had to be like a monument, like a milestone ish birthday. I think it was twenty five. Right. It wasn't like twenty six. It was like twenty five. I bought this camera, brought it down. I've got like all these pictures of us, and like Alex got a suite for us, and sweet. and uh, we were drinking in the suite. We were eating, and we had dinner, and we went out. It was like great. It was just such like a, a wonderful, awesome night. Right. Were you and I time? took Doc, Doc so many pictures. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then I like stuck it in my closet and I didn't pick it yeah, up for fucking or ever. Or you, you put the thing in the hard drive. Like if there's a thousand photos, like, I'm not looking through this. <laughs> it was and that then, too. I've done that plenty of times. Like it sucks. That's the worst part of photography. It, it was the that too. Sucks, yeah. For sure. It was yeah. that too. So I didn't pick it up for years. And then I started getting big into YouTube and okay. I'm not doing YouTube, watching YouTube. And you know, before I would go to bed every night, I would spend like 30, 40 minutes watching random YouTube videos. And I saw something on the Fuji X100V. Uh, V, yeah, no, F. I've got the V, so the, it was the proceeding. Right, that's got the the digital viewfinder. And yeah, all yeah and I was like, this is a sweet camera. I was like, I don't use the one that I've had for 10 years, so I sold it. Mm -hmm. I got not much for it because no. it was fucking 10 years yeah, old. Yeah, that'll get and I, and I got the Fuji, and I started doing street photography. And the first day, so I, I was working in the city, and the first day that I was doing street photography after watching you know hours and hours of video, online i got this picture of this guy like leaned up against the wall kind of looked like santa claus it's like the fucking coolest picture yeah, I, mean, I think I it. it's still it my hang, favorite hanging up in jackie's old uh it was yeah, yeah i've got a print of it I yeah a crazy visual memory. yeah I you, all the you do ones. jesus yeah, yeah, the, the guy with the, the, his hands crossed yeah that was my dad's yeah, hands. Yeah, uh, the guy there's a picture through somebody's like a window a storefront yep you know, yeah so you got that too you years. do have a good visual memory wow yeah Man, you should go on Jeopardy or something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I'm good at photos. So that's that's, shit, man. that's that's how it. I picked up the bug. So I took that first picture that first day on the commute to work, and I was like, I caught the bug. And then I went 
really f- hard into Fuji. I bought the X-T3. Mm-hmm. I bought a bunch of lenses. Oh, yeah. It gets expensive quick. It got expensive quick. And then I was like, this is not me. <laughs> so I sold everything. Really? Why? Sold, well, just I'll tell you bored why. Of me. Oh, okay. I sold everything and I bought a Leica. Mm. And Digital or uh, film M6. Oh, oh, M6, man. I've had one of those. Yeah. I, I sold it a little while ago. So I was Me too. I made so much ago. money on it. It's the lenses, man. Ooh, yeah. They're phenomenal. I love it. That's, so that. then I went full into film. And I will say film is for sure my passion. Yeah. I shoot primarily portraiture with a Hasselblad 500CM. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've got Medium a... Format I've got an, Yeah. I've got an EOS R for, you know, like paid portrait work, mm-hmm. you know, family stuff, whatever it is that I'm right. doing. But film's like my passion. I mean, I got a box of film over there, like hundreds oh, and yeah, hundreds yeah, and yeah, hundreds yeah. of rolls. But I saw my Leica. Keep them in the fridge. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so now I'm I'm at this point in this crossroads of my photography where I'm like trying to figure out where I go next. Like, am I trying to shoot covers of magazines? Am I trying to just sell prints? Am I trying to do all these things? And it's it's back to my original point of the envy of it is like, I wish I was 10 years younger, like you picking up the thing that I love the most in the world right now for the first time. Um, but I also, there is a strong part of me that feels like it's never too late to do something. Of course. No, no, never, never, never. And to that token, Uh -uh. you find something like the woodworking Uh job that you are now doing and crushing. Thank you. Thank you. So my question for you, whether it be photography, whether it be the wood side of things, what inspires you to make art what inspires you to make furniture what inspires you to do like it's, do it's those something things? inside me that i'm like you know constantly trying to create and try to make and it's 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 more like a legacy thing like all right what are you mm. gonna be known for like i you know i've had some friends die in the last 10 years i'm sorry tragic deaths and it really puts perspective into things you know and you really want to be like what what can you leave on this earth you know, like even it's it's just the, the point of having I've had photos and magazines seen around the world in Japan. They're looking at my photos, but just having that tangible thing, I will have that forever. Mm. And that's you know, it's something that a lot of people don't have. That they have this nine to five job, and they live for the weekend. They get fucked up, and that's all they got to live for. And that's not fun to me. I love it's fun to me, but that, it's you, you got to create. You got to be like, what are you really going to leave on this earth? You know, and I'm, I've always been into creative. I've always been into art, even as a kid. You know, I played football. I wrestled. Played baseball. But it was also skating, surfing, snowboarding. It was always just wanted to do more. Um, it's drawing. I was in honors art. You know, I was in the, the, the oh, art show it. in high school. Yeah, I was doing. I was doing really well there. In the wood shop, I had, had like there's a huge uh, wood shop and art show and James Caldwell. So I was in. I had stuff in both. Um, so just you know, how inspired, just constantly looking at people's stuff on Instagram, like any any sort of inspiration I can get, mm. and maybe trying to relate it to what I do. That's a good question. Uh, how do I stay inspired? Like I said, just it's, doing. it's just a, a bug inside you that, you know, you have to create and do something. Because if I'm not, I'm, what am I fulfilling my time with? Yeah, dude. I mean, like I spent the vast majority of my 20s just doing what you said. Going out, getting yeah, yeah. fucked up, trying to hook up with girls. And it's like, what the fuck? Are, like, this is the same it's song not, and dance. Is that, is, that, what, is that life? Is that it's the way not. you live now? It's There's not. No fulfillment. So I, I recently had a conversation with my brother. And I my the number one takeaway that I'm trying to gain from a lot of these conversations is, does your mental perspective come only with time? Is it possible that you can be a 25-year-old version of yourself with the feelings that we currently share now, whereas what is a life, right? Are these lessons that you can only learn over time or you can impart this level of knowledge to someone at 20, at 22? Well, it's, 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 a lot of it comes from experiences. Yeah. Things, experiences will, That's what will, I think. Experiences will happen in your life and that will change you and hinder your, your mindset and your mental you know, process, thought process. So, I mean, you can't be like, oh, well, without them, you're not going to have these enlightened moments or even these, you know, this this mindset. So, either way, it's, it's possible, but yeah. everyone's, everyone's different. Yeah. Um, I, I think, that because for me, like, just personal growth in the last five years is off the charts. Right. Things that I couldn't think like or uh, yeah, do. Yeah, me too. I got, yeah. Dude, that's all I know about. You just, you so, know, could you have been that level of, mm, like... Discipline. Yeah. I've, you know, there's, there's days, like, people think, like, oh, you do this every day? Waking up at four, I go to the gym, I... I God bless you. Five o'clock to six thirty, and then I'm at work from seven o'clock to three thirty, and then at my shop from four thirty to nine o'clock every day. Wow, it's a grueling physically, mentally. You know, I get home from my nine to five job, I'm fucking exhausted. But like, I got still got work to do. I got to do this. So well, maybe got, I'll yeah. listen to a podcast. Maybe I just you know, it's just it's just constant motivation. Just you know, it's it's a discipline. It really I like is. that. It's hard. It's not easy. This isn't for everybody. You know, it, oh, and for I've always sure. wanted to be an entrepreneur too. 
even like the photography i've always I'm, uh, it's all i watch like say if i'm watching tv i'm watching business stuff mm -hmm. like you know like the profit or whatever shark tank that kind of stuff or youtube or podcasts like that always like more self-development and also business stuff mm. so it, it goes hand in hand if you want to be an entrepreneur you know like it's 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 self-development in disguise being a 100%. businessman you know and oh, i've always great. wanted to do that as well you know like i said i'm never fulfilled with a nine to five and who knows how long i'll even have a nine to five well i mean the wood business is going to be I, I probably yeah. could if i wanted to right now yeah but i don't know if yeah. there's, there's more i need it's a to big, do yeah i mean there's all those considerations like health insurance oh and of course fucking yeah, a million yeah i gotta things. get a shop i gotta do there's a whole yeah. you know there's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment but that's in due time we'll from a, from a creative standpoint like you've done sick things work with vans thrashers mm -hmm. starting your own woodworking business what gave you confidence to be able to like fucking pick up a camera and shoot for it's, thrasher magazine yeah, it's, or, it's, it's it's believing in yourself and just like sort of like, like when you hadn't done you gotta it before. go to blind into it and like fuck it i just gotta make this happen sort of thing and try to be as prepared as you can just a rational but confidence it's, yeah you gotta, you gotta it's, that's how it is in life man and anything because you gotta take a leap and anything like that because there's a lot of people who don't and then they're unhappy with their lives <laughs> so and that's it's if you want to really do something great and do something that's gonna really you know make a mark in this world you I gotta like take that. a leap and any you ask any businessman any entrepreneur anyone who's billionaires you gotta take a leap you gotta take chances you gotta like there's a lot of times like even in this woodworking i'm taking on jobs i've never done before i'm <laughs> taking these thousands and thousands of dollars deposits of, you know my customers and what gives you confidence to be like yeah i could fucking do this can, you just I, figure I, it I just, out yeah and then I have, I have a lot of friends who who can do some carpentry i mean they're very talented carpenters but no one makes furniture but still just, just gaining knowledge of what i know going through trying to get as much information I can and just making it happen. Yeah, I have... Figuring it out as I go. I have immense amount of irrational confidence in myself. I I, I wish there was something that yeah. I could figure out. what else out. you can do? You know, yeah. you, can't, you can't depend on anyone else, dude. 100%. I mean, like, uh, my old trope is life short, go mm -hmm. for what you want, of course. do the things you want to do. That's right. And, like, that's a very cliche mindset, but it's very practical. You have to. You have to have that mindset. You know, I'm big on mindset stuff, and I have, like, you know, core discipline of, or uh, principles of how I live, for, of of just discipline and perspective gratitude you know all and have you always things. had that or did it come no to you? it's been coming the last couple of years just because i mean like what flipped the switch uh i don't know if there was anything in particular just maybe i didn't like how my life was going uh you know maybe partying too much getting in just not there's no progression and i'm a progressive person i gotta there's always gotta be something like you know but that's how maybe i got tired of photography i'm like all right what's next or you know anything i really did jobs whatever it may be um women no <laughs> uh but I, I don't know it's just it's just because you you know you have you untapped potential un you know and you, you know like i could be doing better that sort of drive and if you're not like it's a fulfillment if you're not totally happy because there's a lot of unhappy people in this world you know and i know and i could see it and people are like oh well you know i could do this i want to do this all this kind of stuff and i'm like fuck that I, I can't live like that i can't you know and it's 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 only up to you to make something happen i and you're you know, speaking my language I, I couldn't agree with you more i had a conversation recently with a buddy who was like oh dude like you're so inspiring to me i started laughing I, hysterically it's crazy. people like you know like, i started I laughing hysterically. videos on, on instagram <laughs> I love your film. I'm like, oh, people watch your shit. I was like, you know? I, I was laughing hysterically. It's I was nuts. like, listen, I, I, I was like, my photographer, everyone, I, it's getting compliments. People off, oh, you're Steven Surrey. I'm like, oh, you know, like skaters and shit like that. Like, yo, it's like, your photo is my favorite. I'm like, there's fucking huge big time photographers. Yeah. I've been doing this for 20 years. My photo of this, you know, whatever skateboarder. <laughs> that's your favorite. It's, I'm looking I'm like, damn. It's hysterical. I mean, listen, you know, like, it's, it's great, but it's just like, it, that puts shit in perspective. Like, fuck, all right, well, at least I'm doing something that's totally. making a difference. And, and like, the comments always like, oh, I can't believe you, like, just decided to do photography. I can't believe you started a podcast. Uh -huh. I can't believe you're doing all these things. Doing. I'm like, why can't you believe that? Do it, dude. Whatever you want to do, do. That's it. Just fucking do it. Yeah. So I, I think that goes back to the, the original assessment that I was making was like, I think it's like a time thing. Mm -hmm. Like I've reached the point in my life right. and the time and the life lessons uh -huh. that have imparted on me that I want to do things. Of course. I want to like, take yeah, the leap. too short. I live that. Yeah. I, I'm a big thing on a regret. Mm. You know, like even fucking Gary Vayner. I'm a big guy in Gary Vaynerchuk. Been on him for years and years and years. And it's a lot of perspective and regret. Like, you know, you don't want to be in a fucking nursing home at 90 years old, harping on something. Man, I wish I did this. I wish I did this. You do not want to live with regret. It's, it'll eat you alive because I've had it in my life, even I'm only 33. And I'm like, fucking no more. No, what's, your no, big, no. what's your biggest regret? Uh, hmm, I don't know. It's a tough one. Just, just maybe career decisions. Not getting into more disciplined person earlier living to but again that freely, goes back you know exactly uh but it's it's like a regret now it's not like i regretted it back then you know? sure you were living um, your life then yeah it was but it's a little too reckless living of a uh, life that wasn't 
um, doing anything for me. You know, just wasted years almost mm-hmm. where I was getting nowhere with my life. So that's that's our, a, a big like the you know macro that sort of regret. Sure, it's not like one thing like oh if I should have married this girl or you know right that's it. Yeah, that's interesting because again, like the the macro picture is easy for you to look at something like or a time period like twenty five mm-hmm. to thirty where you're like oh I was just fucking yeah. off like of course there's weeks you know there's weeks and weeks go by as you go there months and months go by and now I'm day by day what can I do today every day all my days are planned out the, every hour all right, what am I doing after work how am I going to do this bam 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 I've literally just every day is planned out day before that is uh, an I, incredibly I regimented days. I cannot waste yeah. days anymore there's a uh, there's a Ron Pope uh, who's a, a singer songwriter mm-hmm. uh, lyric that goes uh, the years move fast but the days move slow mm-hmm. and it's like I'm going to get it tattooed on me for sure because yeah, yeah. it's the level of perspective that I think I need on a daily basis. Like when you're sitting at the desk and like I know you work like with your hands on a daily basis, but like when I'm sitting at my computer staring at a fucking spreadsheet right. for like 35, 40 minutes, I'm like, Did this is never back, ending. Like, Fuck, you know? Yeah. So it, it's it's like those moments that like are meaningless and pointless that like are droning you down that you realize like a week from now, Oh man, like oh my mom called me and we had a quick five minute chat and but then like you know twenty years from now my mom's not going to be no, here no, and no. I'll be thinking about that. Right. So the years move fast but the days move slow and it's important to have the perspective of there's no guarantees. No, no, not at all. And, exactly. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. I could die tomorrow. I could drive driving out of here. You know and that know. sort of scares me as well. Mm-hmm. How did you live your life? How are people going to remember you? How are you going to fucking? How you do know, you think people are going to remember market? you? Because you got one life. There's so many people and you have an opportunity. Each person in this world has an opportunity to leave a mark on this world. And what? Do you think your mark's gonna be? I don't know yet. It's not even close. You're I, not there I, yet. I'm, I want to really get into philanthropy. Oh. Getting a lot of giving back. That doesn't even start yet. I just started doing because with my woodworking, like I do a lot of big projects, mm-hmm. and so and I've been doing charcuterie boards in between, like serving meat and meat and cheese mm-hmm. boards. It started with these offcuts I had just laying in my garage of extra like, wood. Yeah, and they were beautiful pieces of black walnut. So I'm like, all right, I can do something with this. So I was milling them down, you know, and selling them, and now. I'm like, all right, well, how about this? Because I know there's a neighbor across the street from my parents who donates her time. She doesn't need it. She's got plenty of money. Her her husband's a German scientist. Wow. Um, so she donates uh, most of her days at this uh, homeless shelter in uh, Morristown. Huh. So I'm like, shit. I'm like, all right, well, this is, you know, it's a serving board. I'm like, let me let's let me try to correlate this. And how can I like, I've, I've, for some reason, I thought about doing this for a while. But I couldn't understand what can I do? How how can I correlate what I do into helping others? I'm like, all right, well, this is serving boards. I'm going to help serve food. To people that you know, you have this charcuterie board that you'll serve your family with, and so twenty percent of these profits for each board is now going to feeding the homeless or, you know, anyone any a, a food kitchen homeless shelter. Dude, that's fucking so, amazing. Uh, yeah, right now I'm working with the one in Morris. You haven't now. advertised this at all. I did. Yes, I did. It's on Instagram. I missed it. There's a video. This is a great video. Fucking too. Instagram. I was in man. Miami. That's funny. I was on a flight in Miami, and I finally figured it out. And so as soon as I got into the hotel, beautiful hotel in South Beach, the one hotel. Shout out to them. Oof, beautiful spot. Um, I was in the lobby waiting for my room because I was got there at like two thirty, so it was like four o'clock. Had a couple of drinks. I'm like, fuck it, I'm filming the video. Because earlier I like teased it, like I got an announcement to make. So a lot of people hit me up on my DMs, like, oh, are you moving to Florida? Are you doing that? Like, thinking, I'm like, no, <laughs> fuck I'm, no, I'm not moving. <laughs> nah, I'll never move down there. Yeah, a lot of unfinished business up here. Yeah. Uh, I like, it. <laughs> you know, like it's nothing crazy. I'm like, you know, I'm just decided to start incorporating, doing some, you know, uh, giving back in my woodworking. That's incredible. Yeah, and, so and fuck homeless solutions in Morristown. So I might each run, you know, maybe it's like six to eight boards in between big projects. I call them runs or whatever. Um, so I might choose a different place to donate to, or maybe just do it twice because it's going to be a whole lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, each board's like one fifty, so twenty percent of that. So it'd be like yeah. a two hundred dollar check. That's so awesome. maybe I'll do it twice. You know, each run to the same spot. You know, so we'll see. Damn man, fuck Instagram for not showing me like the important shit. Like, you know, you, oh, you didn't post. hit the you didn't hit the algorithm that day for them to show you on my feed. Uh, it's like not. I got a lot of views on it. That's fucked it. up. Yeah. Like, that's fucked up. I totally missed that. When, so like, we're gonna link that in the in the yeah, just yeah, yeah. The, the show notes and, and the I just Instagram got the, post for the sure. First one sort of out today or a couple days ago, like out of this run, um, and the, the rest will be delivered this weekend. Hopefully that's fucking awesome. Deliver the man. check next week. Wow, dude, I'm very proud of you for that. That's fucking awesome. I appreciate that. Um, it's always, you know, it's, and it's this has just begun. I, I want to really turn this into something. That's incredible, dude. I mean, that's like the level of mental perspective and like intelligent 
thought provoking decision making that like I'm proud to call you a friend. That's, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank that's you. fucking awesome. I my next question was going to be what are you most proud of, but that seems to be a pretty much slam dunk for the fact that it's got to be that. Yeah, yeah, that you know, just in general, just just whatever I put my mind to, like I'm going to crush. That's what I do. I just I've been successful in everything I've wanted to, like just picking up photography out of nowhere. You know, I've always. How do you deal with failure? Uh, it's a good question. Um, it's like you gotta learn from it. You know, I could be pretty harsh on myself, like anyone, especially in in the creative aspect, because you'll you know there's photos like I'll look at that will be in magazines. And I'm like, fuck, I fucking hate this photo. <laughs> like it's, it's you get old. Like you know, I look at a piece, it's beautiful. Oh, it's just great. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I wish I would have done yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Of course, you're always never satisfied. But failure, um, you got to deal with it. You got to learn from it. Uh, that you, failure is your biggest, you know, your because uh, like, it could be great for you, especially in in if you have your own business and stuff like that. You're gonna fail a lot. Sure, you got to get used to it. You got to have thick skin, or you're not gonna make it. You know, mm-hmm. this isn't for everyone because making like this months and months ago, making tables, like I said, doing shit for people and like learning how wood is. Like, there's one table I made. It's probably one of the best tables. People love it. I constantly get like, oh, can you make me this? And people have no clue about the price. They think it's like a half of what it actually costs. It's, it's expensive yeah. stuff. Um, so they're like, but just the making of it, like how I made this happen. With, I, did, I never worked with this type of wood before. And I was sleepless nights. I'm like, I fucked this up. These persons trusted me in there. You know, so it, it really worried me, you know. But yeah, I, I've, I've calmed down a little while or a little bit. Um, so the way you deal with failure yeah. is by doubling down into your hard work? I guess so. Just, just because, like, for context purposes, it's, like, yeah. in the middle of the pandemic, I took a job. Six months later, I get laid off. Oh yeah, ultimate fail. Well, like, that's right. not your fault. It's not a failure. no, no. It was that's my not fault. A personal failure. No, it was a personal. Oh, failure. it was okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I for thought sure. it was because of the pandemic. Oh, well, I mean, it was like a multitude of things. Okay, right. Okay, okay. I wasn't right for the role. Right. I didn't do a great job. COVID pandemic. Gotcha. There's like a litany of factors right. that fall into that. And it was like my biggest, most public fail. Mm-hmm. Like I had stopped doing my own company that I had started, that I was growing to go take this job. Sure. And it was public and it was it was out there. Yeah. It was like LinkedIn. I've got thousands of right. people. Like, oh, Facebook. I, just, I, I thought you just got this job. And they're like, oh, and did, you know, because you put it on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then everyone knows, congratulations. Like, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then what I found was there's a lot of what happens, you know, explaining to do, and that gets uncomfortable, of course. Sure. And what I found was that through that failure, it has led through the greatest period of growth of my life really? because I, literally, I lost my job on a Friday. I packed my car with a cooler, clothes, Gatorade, water, and I drove across the country for like a month. Oh man! And. That well, I'm going to call it like a photography journey because I basically took my oh, two cameras. Really? I shot like I wish I was a hundred and tw- cross country. Yeah. Some of the, you know the Midwest. That's yeah. what's at. That's photo. I, photo. I shot like a hundred something rolls, and uh, I came back after like twenty something, twenty seven, twenty eight days, exhausted, tired, scraggly as fuck. And I was like, I want to be a photographer. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to be a photographer See, because yeah, I always wanted to do that. It's funny because. I've had these conversations with like very famous photographers. Mm-hmm. I've spoken yeah, yeah. with. Thank, yeah, in my journeys, like the people, the, the photographers I grew up like literally in magazines. So I'm like, I'm like shaking their hands, like, yeah. you know, I got that's how I like got in the Thrasher. The guy mm-hmm. Mike Burnett, who's the photo uh, editor there, he's you know some shot how many magazine covers and stuff like that. I got his number in my phone. Like it's 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 crazy in these situations you get into. You're like, wow, like I know this person. Yeah. Now. So yeah, like, I, I, no, it's all right. I I, I was I, like I had this woman Taylor on my on my podcast and she has shot covers for a sports illustrated mm-hmm. magazine yeah, yeah I know her had uh, James she's phenomenal yeah, yeah she's yeah, incredible I've, I've followed her all the time. she's fucking awesome yeah, as a human she, being she is like my favorite human really? on earth she's Man, awesome my, my buddy James Wolf who's like very very visual art maker like his photography is so evocative of spirit and earth and like just so many things that I can only like mm. hope to be able to, to really elicit capture, yeah, yeah, to in an image. Oh, man. And what I realized when I'm like looking at ever, other people's art that like really speaks That's to me an inspiration as Ooh, an inspiration time, for fuck, sure. How can I get that? Yeah. And then you, when you do the thing, right? So like when I release the shutter button on my Hasselblad or when I'm, or I'm taking a picture, it's the feeling that I get from doing those things that like makes me like double down on this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Right, yeah. And similarly, that's why I started the podcast because these conversations are like soul food for me. Uh, yeah. Like learning where you came from, how you got to where you are, where you want to go, like what your trials and tribulations are like and everything in between is just like food for my soul. I like being able to connect with a person mm-hmm. 
understand their well. journey. Yeah, I, I, I'm the one who talks to the person at a party in the corner that's sitting there. <laughs> Yo, who are you? Where are you from? What are you about? And I'm just like, tell me about yourself. Let me, you know, let's fucking vibe here. I'm, I'm with you, you know? completely. I like knowing people because that's interesting stuff. Because at the end of the people day. to me are interesting. Yeah, me too, man. And that's probably why I'm into street photography right. because it's oh, the yeah, people yeah, watching yeah, yeah. aspect oh, yeah. of life. I, I love street photography as well. It's fun for me. Well, we got to go out and yeah, shoot. Yeah, yeah. I spoke what, about that to you. Yeah, for sure. So, um, my point ultimately being that like it, it took time to get to the place where I'm at now and like the comfortability that I feel in my own skin is, is tremendous. Um, and, and like a, a great, great feeling. Yeah, definitely. Even after shooting something or like, you know, once you upload it, there's times where, you know, I'll, I'll put something into the computer. You'll, you blow it up to the big screen, especially like digital and you're like, wow, fuck, like it's, it's better than I thought it was. And you haven't even touched it in post, but just like when you're looking at a final image or even going to unique, and I just get shit blown up for photo shows and stuff like that. And looking at stuff blown up, like, man, you got to print your artwork. And people are like, yeah, that, yeah, hell yeah. And then people are like, yeah, man, they, even the people, they're like, man, this is sick. Like, man, I'm like, looking like, yeah, this is fucking sick. You know, what's funny. <laughs> it's so a lot of what it's, it's holding your own shit. Like, man, I created this. It's, it's just, but it's just, I don't know. A lot of this goes into like the Instagram world that we live in, and like you know, like I said, fear of failure and perception of failure. Yeah, I was hating on Instagram. I, I had it. I've had it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I had an iPhone for a long time, and it was just a filter. It didn't. There was no. It was almost in the social media. It was just a filter thing. I remember just shooting photos in New York with my friend, like not photos, just with my iPhone, and putting them like just saving it through Instagram. It was just a filter. Uh, it used app. to be that, right, but right. now it's like a way that but people I was, like, like. I said I was hating on people because I'm like all these old photographers that came from Instagram just shooting for Instagram. I'm like, I'm like, what if Instagram goes away? Like you, you don't have 130 thousand followers anymore. Like, yeah, now you need now, TikTok. No, but, yeah, no, but no, but like I just in any social media, like what do you have tangible? What do you you know get in the magazines? Get that's why I'm still big into print and stuff like that. I'm like 100%. you need you need work. You need something to hold. That picture there, yeah, the yeah. guy at the vessel. Uh, it's one of my favorite photos mm-hmm. that I've taken. Ectochrome 100. Shout uh, out. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you blew that out nice. There is something to be said about printing your work it's, because yeah, once you once you get it tangibly in hand, mm-hmm. it, it's a, a difference maker. But my, my point was going that we we live in a society where like everyone's trying to show off online and yeah. and boast about like what they're doing and no one has the real conversations about like dude are you happy like you you having a good day today like I am, how yeah, are you feeling like mm-hmm. a lot of things yeah. that like <laughs> we we show on our day to day highlight yeah, yeah, yeah. reel no, no, are people not people have no clue it's because obviously it's uh there's it's, a lot of hard work everyone's showing what what it's, it's they're the showing the reel. prize they're not showing the, the, the process mm-hmm. i'm the guy in the process because if you don't love the process you're gonna be out of any of this type of shit because it's hard work it's a lot of time you know you can have all these great photos but you're sitting behind a computer for like say if you're shooting for four hours you're shooting you're behind a computer for eight oh, you or know more. especially that's why i never really got into wedding photography there's a lot of money to be made oh, I'm, like, ah, I can't. I'm like i can't i'm like i don't have any enjoyment in that yeah i need to shoot what i love 100 percent um but it's, it's the process. The woodworking hard as fuck. Dude, the shit I have to do on my weekends. It's just nuances. All my time. I'm sitting at work on phone calls with people from, you know, wood, uh, wood mills, just calling, looking for lumber. It's, it's talk about a lot of work to make this happen. But any sort of venture like this, you have to put in the work because this is what makes it all. You know, it's just, if if it was this easy, everyone would do it. You know. Well, I was gonna say you a have lot of a, people don't do it because it's so hard. Oh, for sure. I mean, the barrier entry and what you're doing is incredibly high. There's a level of skill. It's not like I could say tomorrow, "Hey, I want to make a fucking table," right? Because I don't know where to get wood. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck to do. Right? Yeah, it's, it's like a barrier. Like tools. Oh, there's a whole lot. The of skill here, yeah. and level to entry is high. Um, but you're also in an industry, well, industry in a field that is competitive Very, yeah. because you've got the Ikeas of the world mm-hmm. who produce oh, hey, Wayfair, Ikea, all that shit. People it's like, I have customers sending me or potential customers that will send me like a, a table from $140. Wayfair. $140. No, no. I mean like a dining table. That's like 1500 bucks. They're like, Oh, can you do this black hole dining <laughs> table seven feet long? I'm like, I'm like, it's probably from China. It's not hardwood. I'm like the, yeah. wood, the wood alone I would use is a hundred, uh, $1,400 undone, unfinished raw. I'm like you gotta add a uh, seven foot slabs fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, hell yeah! All right. It could be two slabs too. These these tables go for five to ten thousand dollars. Right, so, because but these are like custom artisanal. Yeah, and this is whole custom hardwood. Like the wood alone is very expensive. Right. You know. So you've got this passion that is like unmatched, right? I mean, there are people who do what you do. They're like TikTok famous yeah, yeah, and yeah. Instagram well, you have famous. To see big big people with these big shops with a bunch of employees that do what I do. 
you know. And, and is that like where the next progression is for you? Like uh, to-, to keep it small, though. Okay. I'm gonna if, if I have to get it bigger, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to maybe get employees. I'm gonna have people doing full time. Like it's it's only me. It's very hard. Yeah. You know. because well, so you're limited by your bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just it's like only one person physically. It's not easy. You know. Just working all day. You know. Um, I have to keep in shape to be on my feet from. In the morning to seven to seven. Yeah, yeah. There's days I, I don't I leave my feet until I go to bed. You know, no sitting down, none of that. What shit. does it feel like when you wake up the next morning? Are you like, I could be dog tired, but you have to keep going because like the motivation of like, all right, I got a lot to do today, and that's sort of what you have to, you know. I'm gonna give you the cheesiest thing that I do that has made a market cold improvement. showers. Oh fuck no! Yeah, no, <laughs> fuck it, no. it starts hot. It's like I've gotten to a little while ago. And I started doing it again. <laughs> you start hot, do what you have to do, clean yourself. Last five minutes, cold, not freezing, but cold. You're gonna come funny out, story. Like, you're gonna come out like a maniac. I didn't start taking hot showers until. <laughs> what I'm, do you mean? I'm, <laughs> Dead ass serious. Bathes? What would you do? I used to take cold showers Ooh. till my senior year. Sick. Senior or junior year you in high school. You Seinfeld? Yeah. You have the Kramers? <laughs> oh, I take showers. Cold showers. That's just psychotics. I'll it's tell you exactly what happened. Oh I have a vivid memory of this because <laughs> I, I, we were showering after football practice. Mm-hmm. It was either junior or senior year. I can't remember. You guys shower in your locker room? What's that? Yeah. You freaks? We didn't shower after that's, football. That's, maybe that's why you guys are so good. Nah, we, yeah, we'd go home and shower. We didn't shower together. Oh, uh, you call up probably doesn't have showers. Right? We do. We yeah, okay. know we use them. Oh, <laughs> oh that's weird. So like <laughs> we were showering after practice, right. and I took someone shower afterwards, and it was like too hot, and I put it to ice cold. And someone next to me was like, "Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Ice this cold. is ice cold. Ice cold. Cold. Oh, forever. Always. Why? I was like, oh, I don't know. I never. I don't take hot showers. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? And like, you didn't know. I that's think. I think. To do this? I think maybe I was like. That's wild. I had to be a sophomore and junior because I definitely wasn't a senior. I would have told the person to fuck off. I definitely yeah, was yeah. young enough where I was like, uh, oh, okay, like, I'll, yeah. I'll turn it do up. Do it hot, weirdo. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and that's when I started digging hot showers. <laughs> The other day, my heat went out in my brand new apartment, and I fucking jumped out of the shower. It was ice cold. I can't do yeah, it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what I do do, it's not easy to just do what, it. What I do do when I wake up in the morning is the first thing I do before I check my phone, and I've got a physical alarm clock so I don't grab my phone. Oh, uh, that's good to do, yeah. Or in the other room, I've heard. Is I smile. I fake a smile, mm-hmm. and I read something online that said if you. Something with your brain and your endorphins. Yeah. Something that you I do if you yeah. wake up in the morning and you force yourself to smile, fake a laugh. I like that. I, even I, if it's I, fake. I do a couple minutes of gratitude, just gratitude, think about what I'm grateful for. Oh, I, mean, I, I, like I meditate that. too. I've been big into meditation since I was probably early 20s. After, like a lot of this shit sort of happened after a friend passed away. Um, good friend of mine passed away. He was hit by, struck by a car. Oh, Jesus. I, I was there to witness it. It was oh, pretty, fuck, pretty, man. pretty big on me. Um, Fucked me up mentally for a while. Was it like night, day? Well, like- it was night. Yeah, we were out partying all night, and he was struck on Route 3. It was on the news and stuff like that. He was Fuck. running across Route 3, and he was hit by a car. Why was he? In the car. Just, he was you guys were just fucked up? Yeah, he was trying to run across the street to a, uh, um, a gas station, but there was a median, and there's a fence above the median. He didn't see the fence, I guess, and he stopped. Car hit him probably doing like 70. The guy just kept going. He, the guy's still living with this on his, on his conscious. Wow. But the sec- that's why me and a friend of mine, Waiting to try to pull him out. Another car hit him, and then it was, it was over. Oh, fuck, man. Yeah. Jesus Christ. But, yeah, so... Um, when was this? Uh, 2010. That could fuck a person up, man. Yeah, yeah. How do you move on past something like uh, that? It's, it's... A lot of it's just you have to help yourself, because there's times... You know, it's some dark times. Um, you get depressed, obviously. You have a lot of guilt. You have a lot of, you know, obviously issues. But you have to figure out ways to help yourself. You know, reading, a lot of self-help stuff, meditation... Um, just, just perspective. It sort of, it freaked me out to, to a point where I was like, like I said, like, what am I doing in my life? Like almost like questioning everything. What, the, what am I at the right job? Like life, life's this fucking short. Like it can end tomorrow. Like almost that kind of stuff too. Yeah, of course. So it sort of kicks you in the ass. Like, Hey, like you, I mean, what are you going to be remembered for? Cause he was, everyone loved him. Like he, any type of, you'd walk into a room and you know, or he'd walk into a room and light the place up. Like that's, what are you going to be remembered for? You know, like a legacy. And that's sort of that's sort of where I get this stuff from, you know, just because because of a tragedy. Obviously, you have to find some sort of light in a situation. I mean, that's a that's a level of trauma mm-hmm, yeah, that yeah. not many people can relate to. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah, it, yeah. Obviously, there's just a sort of PTSD from it. Oh, of course. I mean, I've, I've talked to people, you know, therapy and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, swear it, by it, therapy. It, it, yeah, it t- just talking helps. It's, mm. it's not like you know, people think it's some wacky shit. No, no. You just you, it's what we're doing right now. Hundred percent. This talking. is therapy. This, this is therapy for yeah. me as much as this for, is for me. I could do this all day. You know, hundred percent. Like talking, I like helping people. I'm always trying to help. People and you know putting push knowledge on people and like I'm all about positivity. I got this shit tattooed on me, PMA, 
positive mental attitude. I like it's from, that. A, it's from a band. You got good work. Where do you get your tattoos rings. done? Um, a couple different people. Um, I'm the, the only guy I know who both my tattoo artists. Yeah. Is, uh, you can't see it. most of my shit's covered. Right, right. They both moved out of state. Oh man, bummer. Yeah, <laughs> two one's, for two. One's from Caldwell, uh, Kat Ackerman. Mm. She's actually she lives in Pennsylvania now and works out of uh, Black Magic or Black oh, okay. Black something in Brooklyn. Okay, she, she's out of Brooklyn. She did a lot of great work. Um, and these two are from Eric Schwein. He's out of uh, Jinx Proof, right in Montclair. All okay, right, nice. My buddy, he's on Piff Doom. He's awesome. He does a lot of great American traditional. Uh, yeah, that's for him. My buddy Joe Joe Wojcicki. Do you think they're so? This is off topic. Sure. Was back to what we we're talking about. Do you think there's a way to make like cognitive positive impacts on your life without it coming from a tragic place? If you're like of blessed course, with like really, millionaire parents and, that's, thing, not, and, and, and that's it's hard for that because a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people like like if I didn't lose my job yeah, yeah, last yeah. year, I wouldn't have picked my camera. Of up. course, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, things are gonna happen for you to you, and if you're gonna recognize how this can change you, um, there's a lot of people that. I'd, I sort of feel bad for it because they were put into great situations their whole lives, and maybe they'll they'll have millions of dollars and be very unhappy. Oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, and maybe you know a lot of people get depressed because of that. They don't understand, you know, like it's it's perspective and having something real happen to you. I mean, you don't have I, to have to have to have the, that the, happen to you, but yeah, the things like the, just, what I'm interested in learning, it's just understanding what happens and what are you going to do with it? You know, it's it's like and then what? It's like all right, well, my father's got cancer. My I lost my job. Um, I, I I went bankrupt. All right, yeah, that's awful. Everyone everyone's got issues. What are you going to do now? Like, and then what? What mm. and, what now? Almost you know, like and now what? Yeah, yeah, of course, because life goes on. You got to keep fucking going. I like that. You know, and that's what happened to this. Like, I can't dwell on like my friend dying. Like, obviously, I think about him every day still. But how how am I going to make him proud? How am I you know as a human being? What can I do? It's almost like that whole legacy thing. It's almost about you know leaving something on this earth that you know from photography to just making tables like whatever it's something crazy but just and then i trust you i'm not even I, i'm constantly thinking about like what else can i do what else can i do and that's you know i want to start getting to philanthropy you know um we're helping people of need it's just it's only just begun man i'm only it's, i'm trying to snowball and really all right what can i do now i want to own, own a lot of businesses and get more into entrepreneurship you know own a couple more businesses that's, i that's, gotta be honest i don't know that you have the mental perspective that many people are it share. Yeah. I think it's an people uncommon get too complacent. Yeah. Too comfortable with this nine to five. Complacency kills. And it's yeah. just it's 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 kills it's just it's not a fulfilling life because they're gonna be there's gonna be a, when they're fifty years old, that's why they'll get divorced, cheat on their wives, get this fucking shit like oh fuck, like uh what did I get do with, what am I doing with my life? What did I do with my life? Maybe it's regret. It's life too short, man. Mm. No. It's it's you have to take it by the balls yeah. and constantly be like, all right, well what am I doing? How can I improve? What's next? Is this really making me happy? Am I fulfilled as a human being? You have to go to bed being satisfied what you're doing every day. What's you the know? best piece of advice someone's ever given you? Ever a lot, man. Uh, and I mean someone like in your life, not like a yeah. Gary V kind of person. No, I mean, no, like, no. Um, that's a good question. Um, don't half-ass it. In life, doesn't matter what it is, for my uncle. He's like, you got to, whatever you're going to go into, it doesn't matter if you're, you're cleaning up Shit, shit off the ground like you can't doesn't matter what the job is doesn't matter what you're doing Do you it. better put all into it you know because that's integrity doing it like doing what's right or doing the right thing when no one else is looking because that's that's something that's a character thing and that's how you if you live your life that way and people will see that or even because you know you didn't fucking fuck up or not fuck up slack mm -hmm. you know because if you do that and you'll 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 have that perspective into everything you do totally you know say if you mess up on this the small things and they'll, they'll snowball into the big things and then you know but if you if if you the way you clean your apartment the same way you clean your or, or it's do something else you know you do you, photography you, or this and that yeah like, if you're gonna do something it, it, if you're gonna do something that's it. worth doing it yeah, the right you way you can't no all of it all in there's no half stepping hmm. i like that I, I i mean dude like obviously we've been friends for a short while mm -hmm. we've only i think we met last year yeah right, yeah, yeah. right Probably, before yeah, the pandemic yeah and uh i gotta be honest i'm wildly impressed with like your mental attitude and especially in the face of like what could be like a traumatically life-defining event like mm -hmm. to take something that's yeah, like i mean i've had a couple other friends die from overdoses and shit like that it's just 
it's always like my whole I, I'm gonna get a tattoo now I've always said like one day it'll all make sense I've, I've, I'm gonna have a photo show one day and that's what it's gonna be called one day it'll all make sense because oh. there's shit just happened like in life you're like alright everything's going great then something happens and you're like what the fuck where'd this come from you know even relationships this has happened to me where I'm like what the fuck like out of nowhere you know it, it, it could be anything you know it's just it's it's life's gonna fucking hit you in the nuts out of nowhere and you better be ready for it or you have to gain something from it you know and it, it's 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 life's funny it's so crazy but I yeah. love it now what yeah yeah but I, I appreciate that man I really do yeah I mean, you mean you're a very like minded person that's why we, we sort of gelled yeah you know man fuck I'm like I'm 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 genuinely blown away like to, to be like I've gone through some shit everyone goes through mm-hmm. some shit I can't say that, like, and I know ten years is a far removal, but like mm-hmm. from witnessing something that's Still tragic. Me today, yeah. yeah, I'm like wildly impressed with like you. Me, a, a very human. emotional person too. I was very stoic. I didn't like it took me a lot to cry. I'm with there. A lot to stuff like that, but dude, I'm. I, I, I'm about to get deep on you now. I mean, please wa- do. Watching parents bury their child, that was heavy. That yeah. fucking hurt. Like man, I had my uncle who died of a brain injury. He was a brain aneurysm. He was. Retired for three months. A great fucking financial job out of, out of New York City. He worked for a chemical bank. He worked for all these banks. Right by, you know, great house in Connecticut. Three months into his retirement, shovels the fucking driveway. Brain aneurysm, dead in his fucking driveway. My, and, you know, and watching my two cousins, one was in high school, one was a freshman year in college, bury their fathers and the, the pain going through theirs, like eyes feeling their pain, burying their father, like seeing the casket and then that hits me. And then, dude, I cry in commercials now. So like, do I. I'm watching. It's fuck, so dude, bad. I'm, I'm so I get sorely hyped for people like Shark Tank. Like you hear these stories and like they get their deal. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, dude, I'm, do you I know get what so gets me? And I start. T- I'm like, yes. Like I, I feel for people. I want people to just do well. Me you too. Know? I man. get so hyped on fucking success. Of people, that wasn't me ten years ago. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't give a flying no, fuck about I anyone. Like I didn't care. It just I took me a lot. I, I was in motion. I was like a fucking wall. Mm. You know, like, I was that way even too. My parents like, yeah, he barely cries. Like anything that happened, a funeral, stuff like that. Um, oh my, out of my parents, I'm usually like the the quiet one. You know what gets me? Uh, like really, for a while. really in my feels. This is gonna be fucking hysterical. Golden buzzers. America's Got Talent. Oh yeah, I, I will I can't watch. Wa- Gold I, can't, I can't watch that. <laughs> I, I don't have time to. I, I, <laughs> no, no, I watch, watch it on TV, YouTube. I gotta watch this. I watch it on YouTube. Yeah. The highlights <laughs> so, when these guys. Oh, yeah. When this girl who's like thirteen and yeah. she's bullied because oh. she like has a cleft lip or something, <laughs> and then she sings Fuck fucking yeah, Beyonce. Them, dude. Have, yeah, I'm crying. I'm wa- it, it, <laughs> dude, I get hyped. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sitting there yeah. crying. It's hysterical. That, I'm, yeah, I'm with you. On that. But I didn't, and, and like I, that, it ultimately ties into the thing yeah. that like I, so been... I oh, dude, undercover boss. Who? Oh, At yeah. the end, I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm like, yeah, yeah get two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, we're gonna get I'm like, fucking like, yes. yeah. Fuck I'm yeah. a wreck. Like, and that's because now that hypes you up. That's inspiring. You're like, yeah, see, fucking hard work. People are fucking real. You know, if you fucking put in the time, hundred percent. You know, just do your fucking. You know, it's it, you know, not to impress anyone. You do it just to be a good person and to just constantly bust your ass, dude. Do the right thing. It'll get fucking shit will happen for you. You're speaking my language, man, because, and again, these are like emotional growths mm-hmm. and like personal growths right. that and I've I, only yeah, seen I mean, I wish recently. I had that. You can't, but you can't, it's not, people don't, and I, it's sad because I've had friends like that I not like barely hang out with anymore that I've had for a long time. Like, oh, give me a little hang out this and that. Like, I can't hang out with you. It's growth. We're on different, you know, levels, man. Like, you know, you're sitting, like you, all they do is complain, you bitch, and they complain about shit that they're putting themselves into. Like, wow. it's a, a relationship problem mm. where I'm the very, very honest with them. Like, yeah, well, why the fuck do you do that there? Why are you fucking doing this to her? Why, like, oh, well, she fucking hate, she's mad at me now. Yeah, well, why the fuck is she mad at you? Oh, oh, oh. I'm like, yeah, it's all your fucking... Because you're in it, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like, I don't have fucking time for that. You I don't reap what you sow. Exactly. I'm like, dude, you did this to yourself. Don't I, fucking complain to me about that. I, I think the less... I've been fortunate in that, like, I've had the same group of guy friends for, like, my mm-hmm. entire life. Yeah, I've had a lot. i got a lot of friends. Yeah. And, like, you know, different groups, from skaters to kids I grew up with in town. Like, I have a huge fucking group of friends. I have a lot of friends that are huge musicians. So, it's just... You know, it's 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 like whatever day I want to be. You know, do you not find- I want to be. It's just you know, if I'm going to see a show, if I'm going to do this, it depends on what interest I'm in doing today. One of the reoccurring things that I bring up a lot is like how regimented our lives are at a young age. So it's like sixth grade yeah. graduation, senior well, year. It's, it's, everything it's, it's sort of that whole fucking system of right. What small town? This is you know how you're supposed to do things. This is what you're supposed to do after college. A year, how you're when you're supposed to be married by. Hundred percent. That's crazy. And I, so trust I, me, I can get I, heavy into that. I, I've often like flexed against that. Like mm-hmm. so, I'm like out of that mold yeah. big time. But now at 35. And like staring at five years from now, like where's forty? Right. Do you project future you at all? Yeah, you have to. You have to. You have to have goals. You have to have some sort of visualization of where you want to be. You know, or of course you'll go nowhere, and shit won't mm. happen for you. 
But also, like I said, getting back to that, like, you know, I live in a small town, obviously. Out of my core group of friends that I grew up with in high school, most of them are married, you know, probably have kids. But I've always been the one who's like, all right, they want to do this shit. Like, they all, you know, maybe followers. And I'm like, I'm fucking doing this. That's all right. Like, I sort of broke away from them in, like, in the mid-20s. That's why I got back into, like, skateboarding, getting into skateboarding, hanging out with a lot of skaters, building fucking skate parks and stuff, you know, out of nothing, just from donations. We built, we we're building skate parks in Newark. That's, That's whole awesome. Thing. Yeah, I can get into that also, but... Um, so it's just, you know, like my mother's like, Oh, when are you going to get married? Yeah. I'm almost 30 years old then 33. And then I'm like, listen, I don't care. I don't care who's old, who's doing this because it's like, it's, I've seen it where it's like, I've had friends who like are following so-and-so Joe just got married. And then like, you could tell they're, they're getting heat on themselves. The very next person they fucking meet, they're engaged in six months or two years. I'm like, this is I'm like, I, it's not, like, I'm okay with getting that. a new handbag. I'm okay. Like, with it's that. not, Oh, so-and-so <laughs> got the new Louis V. I need to get it too. This is life. Just yeah. cause so-and-so had a fucking child. You don't need to have a child. I don't. Yeah. Well, fucking, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah. But stuff like that, you know, I, uh, I, everyone did at their own pace. It's for sure. I, I will likely meet someone and marry them yeah, right away. But too. that's I'm because not, like when I meet not, my person, right? Of course. But I meant it more so like life wise, like I've tried to get to a position where I'm no longer being like where am i going to be in five years because mm -hmm. wherever it's going to be it's like wherever what i'm doing now is going to take me right and i think it's like jesus take the wheel like yeah. i'm just kidding yeah but like literally <laughs> i've gotten to the point where like i'm so happy in the skin that i'm in yeah, in, yeah. in the you place you can't think too much and try to plan too much yeah no, it's because shit won't fucking you'll, you'll, you'll get lost in your own head 100 you'll, you'll be like oh sh this isn't how it's supposed to go or this is how it has how it's supposed to be planned or mm. don't plan too much 100 there's, there's certain you know and that's a lot of it's confidence because a lot of people can't go into situations like i i pride myself on being it my father's not this way he gets very nervous and anxious about like things that the fearing the unknown mm. maybe he's going on vacation maybe he's doing shit like that and like, it doesn't matter what the situation is. I'm like, fuck it. If whatever happens to me, I'm going to fucking 100%. So roll with it and then operate as I had, you know, the but best that, line, that's what I have to have life the, with too. The best line I've, I've heard in a while is you can't worry about the wreckage of the future. Mm -hmm. Like the shit that's going to happen to me in a month from now, a year from now, six months from now, whatever it might be. Yes. How am I going to spend today worrying about it? Of course. It? I mean, you, you piss the day away. You can control it. Yeah. Obviously the decisions you make, you know are the outcomes of your life. hundred percent. Also, mm. you, you can't bug out about it because you'll be sitting in your apartment doing nothing. Yeah. Because a lot of people, people yeah. do that. People <laughs> get too scared and they're like, oh, well, I don't want to do anything. Or like everything bugs them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Uh, so I like to spend the last bit of every podcast okay. just doing like some rapid fire questions. Sure. Like some of them are easy. Some of them are heavy. Uh -huh. uh, we'll start off with an easy one. Wait what's on what's, uh, what's your favorite movie? I don't have one, man. Uh, I love movies. Um Top three, five. Mm, just a couple dude, that stick I, out. I couldn't. Uh, I love seeing Private Ryan. That's Good always one. a classic, obviously. Um, big Godfather fan. Oh, yeah. Classic Part two, right? Shit. Yeah. I've always liked one first. Really? Yeah. Part two's good, but just the, the simple simplicity of one. Um, how it's filmed. I'm like big into like you know quality of film and just shit like that. Uh, let's see. It's a lot, man. I mean, that's good. Film I haven't seen recently. Uh, the Green Book. You seen the Green Book? <sighs> Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I loved that movie. I'm I, a huge. I don't have time to watch movies. I gotta be honest. Yeah. I love that movie. Did it also feel I won an Academy Award? You know. I mean, yeah, Best Picture. Mm -hmm. Did it also feel, so like? Uh, I want to take like two things away. The movie's incredible. I loved it. I've seen it <laughs> yeah, at I, least. I'm four. big into writing and like how it was written. Like, well, you know, people are like, oh, it's lame or whatever. I'm like, dude, that's fucking phenomenal. The backstory of it is yeah, incredible. Uh, like, dude, I didn't the know book, that was real. Yeah, I had no clue. But I, it's it's funny how like. Almost recently, just a small side note, like a friend of mine, like father knows the fucking guy who's like in it. The driver? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, it's uh, my father's friend. I'm like, what? Like, I think he's from Jersey. He's, they're from uh, Brooklyn? Queens, I yeah, think. Okay, but yeah. it's just, it's weird how shit works. Yeah. You know, who knows who. Uh, I love the movie. I've seen it three or four times. It just felt like, I don't know. It felt like the right movie at the right time kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. I, Is it the best movie I've ever seen? No. no. I love it. It's a great. Oh, yeah. it's on. I'm gonna watch it. Right. Movie. Yeah, my father told me about it. He's like, oh, I'm like, so right. good. I'm like, all right. I'll, I'll Our parents it lived it though. Yeah, they lived that. That time, big time. Yeah, hell yeah. I might do the shit my dad would tell me about. <laughs> he was because he grew up. He was an immigrant, born in Turkey, and he. Uh, no shit. Yeah. Um. So he he moved to the uh, Newark, North Newark, in the '60s. You know, he, right, he, right. It's funny. Newark's yeah, right, like he was yeah. living all Italians down there. Literally, like the many saints in Newark. This whole new movie. That's his neighborhood. Nice. Like Enzo Rosillo, the owner of Rosillo's in Caldwell, lived across the street from him. They're the same age. 
I worked at Rasilla's at 19. He's like, I know your father. He's I'm like, what? He's like, he goes, your grandfather. He's Turkish, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, your father's Turkish. Have your grandfather come in. He's like, he's like, yeah, we live the. My dad was like, yeah, we live the cross. Oh my god. And his thing back in '64 on on uh summer road or summer avenue in newark it's wild and he my father would tell me he's like yeah thanks to be rolling down the street yeah all this type of shit then he moved to caldwell in the early 70s nice. like it was like you know the whole fucking i mean that's how dream. that's how we all end up yeah, out yeah. here my my dad ended up in maplewood uh my mom ended up in south orange mm-hmm. i mean that's how like pretty much that's it all it's happened. our area especially where we grew up like half my graduating class was from bloomfield belleville yeah. Newark, and caldwell that's so funny it's called the guinea gulch as the guinea Brown gulch. Says bloomfield avenue yeah. Yeah, 280 <laughs> and bloomfield avenue run parallel up i know Texas county baby um what's uh what's your favorite book uh man um i mean i don't have a favorite uh just what i've been reading recently um I thought it's like self-help. jab 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 Whoa. left hook what Gary Gary Vee, yeah. I, I've read that. I've read all of his shit. <laughs> Recently, um, one from Tony Ga- uh, David Goggins. He's a Navy SEAL. He's yeah, big I read it. Uh, I forget what that was called. Uh, it's good. Well, my it buddy was, Rex gonna kill me. It was he really good. It, it was yeah. really good about his life and stuff like that. Uh, the PMA effect from uh, John Joseph. He's the lead singer of the band The Chromags. Uh, it's it's another self not self help. It's just you yeah, know, just shit like that. Uh, Oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey's new book. I re- I listen to that. I do a lot of like uh, Audio Audible, books, yeah. yeah, all the time. I listen to that on the way and way back from uh, Miami. Green lights, awesome, very, yeah. very, very. I've heard it's very good. It's very and good. he narrates it, right? Yeah, it's it's great hearing yeah. his voice too. Oh, I right, would, right, you wouldn't, right. yeah, you wouldn't want to learn it like hearing that because that was his first movie. And I was like, his that learning about that whole movie, like it's it's funny. It's that really, is really cool. good stuff. But it's very like inspiring perspective you, you learn a lot about him and you're getting a lot of respect for that guy nice. what he's been through and like I, man this guy's really got his fucking shit together i've got it Mental. here somewhere i haven't read it yet yeah i have got i'm, I'm the it's king tough. of i, I buy I, like i 10 would love f- to read books but once i start i'm so tired at night I, yeah. I, i'll get three pages i'll be exhausted and my yeah. eyes will be i will never finish them I dude 95 percent of my mm-hmm. reading is done poop time yeah i'm in my car in the headphones when i'm running at work when i'm doing like a woodworking it's all podcasts and yeah. reading you know Nice. What's uh What's your favorite food? Mm, uh, I love steak. I love pizza. Buffalo wings. I love garbage. How about buffalo chicken pizza? Yeah, of from Angel. Oh, it's the best. It's the personal, fucking though. best. I gotta get the personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, not not false. You gotta either. crush it. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Do you believe in an afterlife? It's hard. I don't know. I've always thought about it, but I, I'm I'm like a science guy. Like it doesn't make sense to me. We're we're animals. You know, uh, I think it does make sense to me. I'll, I'll give you a good I book think, to uh, read. We very well could be just accidents, meat, meat and bones in a, in a ground. <laughs> just meat sacks gone. I uh, like a dog. Is I used to think that too. All these animals go to heaven because we're the fucking same thing. So I used to have like a very uh, nihilistic. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, I, to me, it just makes sense. How? I, I totally get but that. But there's plenty of like shit. Like oh yeah, like afterlife. I would like to think maybe I maybe I do because. You know, to, to, to a certain, I still pray. I still, you know, so who obviously have to if I'm praying to somebody. Mm. Um, so yeah, I guess I do. It's yeah. just it's like one of those back and forth. Like oh, I guess it doesn't make sense, but also there is sort of a belief of you know there's a faith. Some sort. I like that. I mean, I've got multiple it's religious hard. tattoos, but yeah, I'm not big yeah, into religion. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> rosary on my arm I've, for my brother who's a bad accident <laughs> as a kid. You know, and that's, that's there was a rosary next to his hospital bed. I got it because he should have been dead that night, and he lived, you know, out of a huge car accident. Wow. So I got it. I'm like, all right, this is a remembrance. So obviously, yeah, I still have faith. But I like that. Um, what's the biggest piece of advice that you have to give to someone who's hearing you on this podcast, like first time, yeah. someone who doesn't know you? What's like your mantra, your motto, something that you want to, rec- you know? Uh, don't dwell on the past. Regret. Do not fucking let it happen. Um, you don't want to be older. Perspective. Fucking constantly keep perspective. Be grateful. Constant gratitude. Discipline is going to be the way you get any sort of success. Do hard work. Hard work, hard work, hard work. You know, this is just saying that the only tangible part of success is hard work. You know, like you could be talented. You can, you can have this, this and that. Yeah, I mean, what's what's the only thing that anyone could fucking do if they want to be successful is work hard. They could be not the smartest, the talented, best looking, fastest can't jump high can't be naturally athlete you know so work hard um 
leave it all out there. Don't fucking half-ass shit. Uh, be grateful for what you have. Definitely, I'm, I'm so big on gratitude, you know, because it's people get they get so hungry. another thing. Oh, they're like, oh, my, we're supposed to be in my life. Oh, the job sucks. This and that. You gotta fucking look at some sort of perspective. Oh, I I mean, like gratitude you know, has been be way worse, way uh, way worse. Like in, in a heart. You know, there's so many fucking tomorrow. Humans. Your life, you know, like you fucking won the an lottery. hour from now. You won the lottery, could, yeah. man. You're born. You're in the fucking America. Like, people have no clue yeah. how good we have it, how good anyone yeah. has it. I'm big, big on gratitude because, like you said, like, we... Uh, That's a happiness. We happiness have is hit, the goal, man. Yeah. Happiness. I just want to be happy. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And happiness comes from within. Of course. Yeah. And that's because a lot of people don't understand. They think it's the house, it's the fucking cars, it's the money in the bank. It doesn't matter. Nope. It's, it's what it's... What are you fulfilled? Because when you, it's are gone you tomorrow... Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with what yeah. you're doing right now? Exactly. It's gone tomorrow. And you look back, did I fucking... All right. Am I satisfied with where your life happened? And a lot of people aren't. Like, cause I've, I've talked to people. I've said like, yo, like, what if you die tomorrow? Would you be satisfied with where your life has been? Like, oh no, not fuck no. Mm. I'm like, what are you doing about that? That's a that's a lot of the reason for these conversations. Yeah. I think I want to know how people feel about yeah, that. I'm never. It's just, I, I guess I could be. Yeah. I'm, no, I wouldn't be. If I died tomorrow, I wouldn't be satisfied. Cause nah. I, I have so much more. There's a lot of unfulfillment. So much, oh, big time. Yeah, even people are like, oh, potential. why don't you move? Like people even moving. I'm like, I got a lot of unfinished business. I live in Northeast New Jersey. We were very fortunate to live where we live. This is where all the money's at in the fucking country, like 70-something percent in the fucking tri-state area. Um, if, if you make it here, you make it anywhere. But it's, if you're good at something, there's 15 other people just as good. Mm-hmm. So that's like that drive then, right there. Like, yeah. fuck, like, you know, like, I don't want to, you know, bitch out. Like, oh, I'll move somewhere else and I'll just, it'll be easier. It's but, it's running, right? I, I've had this conversation repeatedly, especially with like my last podcast with Jess Miller, because... Mm-hmm. Um, She's always wanted to live in California right. and she just moved there and she couldn't be happier. And like, I love that for her. But like, awesome. there was a lot of times in my life where I had the opportunity to move to yeah, Florida yeah, or Miami but and no, I didn't because I can't do it yet because I'm not, I'm unsatisfied. hundred percent. The, the, the timing for everything yeah. is, is immensely no important. Way. I haven't even came close to yeah. killing New Jersey. I'm with you, man. I can't wait. Dude. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me, man. This has been helpful. I, I, I gotta be honest. I'm, fun. I'm, uh, I'm wildly impressed with like your mental attitude and, uh, just I how you like it. go about attacking. Thank life you, man. And, I mean, uh, I, that's that's the only thing. I mean, I do that even shit on Facebook, on Instagram, like constantly putting quotes or whatever. If I could, someone could read something I put on, or just even listen to me or hear me. You know, if I could inspire one person or just like give someone else a fucking uplift of some sort, because if their day sucks, if they're not feeling great, it's like oh fuck, they read something on my Instagram. That's gonna help me, and that's gonna make it all worthwhile. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, you're a good dude. And okay. uh, thank you're you so much too. for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Thanks, buddy.